What are you doing in my swamp? Hello everybody, this is Ogre Boy, and I'm going to be doing my review for the 1989 movie Halloween 5 The Revenge of Michael Myers. So, this movie picks up a year after Halloween 4, and uh, uh, we find out at the end of that movie Michael Myers had survived and everything and had floated down a river and was picked up by this her old hermit who took him into his, his little treehouse thing that he has in these woods and Michael has been there for a year and is reawakened and everything a year later and is going back to Haddonfield to find Jamie um, who had been in an institution after almost killing her mother and stuff at the end of the last movie they they were at con where she doesn't kill her mother but she almost killed her and everything and it it's indicated that it's because of a connection she has with Michael and everything throughout this movie. She keeps having visions of him and stuff and uh, um, as it goes on and everything she like starts seeing him when he's attacking people and stuff. Sometimes she can tell who it is, sometimes she can't. And also she can't talk in the, throughout the first half of this movie. She She's mute through it and everything. Um, but Dr. Loomis is trying to help her find Michael and stop him once and for all, once again. Uh, this is a, a pretty decent sequel. Uh, when I first saw it, I didn't really like it because of the way they just totally retcon the ending of Halloween 4. I didn't like it, but every time I rewatch it, it has grown on me and stuff. I still have problems with it, but I do still enjoy it as well, though. I think it's a, a pretty good movie in the franchise. Uh, and I, I've kind of gotten to where I kind of think it's a little underrated like a lot of people love to talk about how bad this one is but there are way way worse movies in this franchise um, but I love Danielle Harris's performance in this I think she's even better in this one than she was in the Halloween 4 like she just does a really great job for especially for being so young she was only had to have only been like 9 or 10 years old when she made this movie and she was really really great in here and uh and once again you got uh donald pleasance as dr loomis and he's still pretty good too um although i don't think he was quite as good in this one as he is in some of the other movies i still liked him in it and everything and it was a decent decent uh return to the character I, I, he's just fun to watch as his character he's so over the top at times it's it's really fun to watch and everything. He didn't get to the level of over the top that he was in Halloween 2, but he, he is still pretty over the top in this one at times. And there's parts in it where he kind, kind of seems like he's being a little bit mean to Jamie and stuff too, but it, it, it just, I think he does a good job. Uh, but my biggest problems with this movie is that they bring back, uh, Rachel and stuff just to have her killed off and everything. I, I hated that. Like, like Rachel was a really great final girl in Halloween 4 and stuff. And it, I hate that they, I hate when they bring back the really good final girls just to kill them off and everything. And if they would have at least made her die halfway through the movie or something or die saving Jamie, it wouldn't have bothered me. But then she just gets, gets killed in her house and stuff. And it just, it's not very satisfying into that character and everything. Because I really do like Rachel. Um, and instead, she's kind of replaced with the character Tina, which is a lot of people like to talk about how bad Tina is. Like, she's really annoying and all that. And when I first saw the movie the first couple of times, I thought, yeah, she is kind of annoying. Uh, but there are way more annoying characters in other franchises, like, Jaws 2, for example. I can't remember that girl's name that sc screams in Jaws 2 every five seconds, but that character gets on my nerves way more than, than Tina does and everything. And she's kind of your typical teenage girl. She just wants to go out and have fun with her boyfriend and her friends and stuff instead of hanging out with uh, 
Jamie and stuff, which I did like that though. Like she should have stayed with Jamie and and Loomis and stuff, knowing that she was going to be in danger. But she, this is just one of those dumb horror movie decisions that you get in a lot of these movies. So in a way, I think it thought that was dumb, but it didn't really ruin the story for me and everything. I wasn't like heartbroken when she died though. To be honest, I. I, I didn't love the character of Tina, but I don't think she was near as bad as everybody says either. Everything, yeah, she could be kind of annoying, but Annie was really annoying in the first one. He, nobody really complains about that, so like I said, there, there are other characters that are annoying too. Uh, and I think that, that Tina was annoying, but she was also, she also did have a likability to her. She was kind of likable too, and Wendy Kaplan did a good job playing her. But I wouldn't say that that she's a super, super great character or anything. Um, the kills in here are all pretty good. My favorite one is when he's, he kills a guy in the barnyard when they're, they're having set, or the uh, barn. He, he takes a, a pitchfork and stabs him through. That was an awesome kill and everything. And then uh, it's got some other good kills and stuff in here, but the, that's the main one that sticks out to me. Um, and I like the one where he kills uh, uh, the guy's girlfriend. I don't remember who it is. The guy that was dressed up like Michael Myers throughout most of the movie. And Tina goes in and finds their bodies and stuff. And you kind of see the aftermath and the aftermath of the cops and stuff, which I'll get to in a minute on them. But uh, they did really good on the effects and stuff with those uh, kills and everything, like the makeup and stuff. On their aftermath and stuff, you see the holes from the pitchfork in their necks. But that looked pretty cool. Um, but uh, I don't really like the setup that they had for Halloween 6, though, because Halloween 6 didn't really follow it. I heard that the producers cut follows follow some of the setup a little bit more and everything. I'm wanting to see that version. I haven't had a chance to see it yet. I don't know when I'll get to, but uh, I think that that for the most part Halloween 5 is a decent movie I don't think it's super super great but and the, the cops like I said they have these two bumbling cops that and they play this clown music and stuff when they're when they're on screen for the first time and everything and it's really really cheesy and dumb and everything I know the filmmakers were wanting to pay tribute to Last House on the Left because some reason I don't really know. I, I I don't know a lot of people that love Last House on the Left. It's an all right movie, but like, why pay tribute to it in a Halloween movie and make the cops have clown music? It just I always thought that was really silly and dumb. Uh, it doesn't like totally ruin the movie for me like it does some people. I, I think it kind of adds to the the charm of it because this one is kind of cheesy at times and everything, but I think it kind of adds a little bit to the charm to it. Um, and the, the, uh, and everything, but I think this is a, a decent enough movie. It, it, there are way worse horror sequels out there, like other franchises, like Friday the 13th and Child's Play, both have way worse fifth installments and everything. Uh, so I, I can't really say that this one is even that bad compared to those franchises this fifth installments like uh, and everything but and like I said J uh, Daniel Harris was excellent as Jamie and the, uh, I heard that she like had a hard time doing the, the acting and stuff with the the voice uh, being mute and stuff she kind of had a little bit of trouble with it and stuff but I think she gave a really great performance and I think that, that we got, got a good movie and as far as Michael goes I think uh Don Shanks is a pretty good Michael Myers. I think he did a really good job and everything. He also plays the man in black at the end of the that appears a couple times in the movie and has a big part at the end and everything. I thought he was good and everything. Then the other thing I don't like about this movie though is when they, they show Michael without his mask and he's crying and stuff like that. I, I didn't like that. Like I didn't like that they humanized him and stuff because he's supposed to be the embodiment of pure evil and stuff. I didn't like that, but uh, aside from that, there's not a whole lot else I can really say that I didn't like. And I thought the the mask was pretty 
pretty mediocre in this one. I think it's much better than the Halloween 4 mask, but it's still not one of my favorites out of the masks, but I think it's okay. Um, it looks like they took like a Nicolas Cage mask for if if National Treasure 2 would have been out at that time, it looked like it. And that's what it reminds me of. Every time I I see the mask, it reminds me of Nicolas Cage for some reason, especially in certain shots of it and everything else. It's like this dude looks like he's about to try to steal the Declaration of Independence, but, uh, but yeah, so, uh, I'd say I'd give Halloween 5, or Revenge of Michael Myers a 7.5 out of 10. I, I like it a lot more than I used to. It's not one of my most favorites uh, of the franchise, but I do love it a lot more than most people do, and I still feel it's really underrated and has a, has a really good story and stuff, so uh, I think it what follows it kind of hurts it a little bit too, because it's like sandwiched between one of the better sequels with Halloween 4 and then Halloween 6, which to be honest, I don't really remember very well. I don't think I actually think that one's as bad as most people say either, but I find it just to be kind of mediocre and forgettable, because to be honest, I really don't remember much about Halloween 5 except for Paul Rudd. So I'm kind of, I mean, Halloween 6, so I'm kind of looking forward to revisiting it and everything. But anyway, let me know in the comments what you think of Halloween 5, and I hope you enjoyed this video, and have a good day, everybody.